Welcome to the Numerologist Podcast, where we bring you a very special guest every single week to help guide you on your spiritual journey, live with abundance, and inspire your soul. Hey, Lourdes. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Rose. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. Now, you are a Reiki master, and I've been on your website, and you have so many different attunements and qualifications <laughs> and certificates and things like that. So, can you just tell us a bit about who you are, what you do, and, and, and your story? Well, as you mentioned, I am a Reiki master. I've been doing this for more years than I want to think about. <laughs> and my goal with Reiki is to introduce the world to it and how it can help improve people's lives. I do this through my YouTube channel, which right now has over a thousand videos. I think it's close to a thousand one hundred videos of you know physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual challenges that people have that can help them, you know, with whatever they're going through. And that's my biggest source of work is that. My website then offers like my social media, Reiki infused photos. People don't realize that photos can carry energy. So I usually offer them on my YouTube community page, Facebook, you know, Instagram, Tumblr, whatever. And that carries because a lot of times people may not have access to videos. I do a lot of different types of Reiki because for me, what I have found is that although Reiki is general, sometimes people need a more specific frequency. And that means that there's a special type of Reiki. For example, people with heartache, I find that Karuna Ki Reiki assists them with that. People who need grounding may use Kundalini Reiki or people who working with prosperity need money Reiki. So each one of them has a frequency. I, my whole purpose has kept evolving if you you do numerology and it was so funny because there was a period of time where I did numerology reports because that was what was needed from the people I was working with at the time. So it evolves and it constantly changing depending on the needs of the society at the time. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, it's really interesting that you, um, you talk about all the different kinds of Reiki because my next question was actually going to be, what is Reiki? Um, so let's talk about Reiki as a whole, and then let's break it down a little bit into the different kinds of Reiki. Okay. Reiki loosely translates into universal energy. It's really the energy around us. People think that it's my energy. It's not. I channel the energy. I find that it is a combination of uh, the energy of spirit, whatever you want to call spirit, God, goddess, universe, whatever, and the earth energy. And the two combined together, I just think of it, if you have some coming from above, some coming from below, they meet up and you are able to transmute it through your hands, through your eyes, through your body in whatever shape or form. So you're just a channel for it, just as if you were a wire. And, and that's what you are. You conduct the energy. It's not something that I say, I am going to go out there and I'm going to do it. I may say, you know, I may just put my hand on somebody and I just let it flow. It's not something you can force. And that's something that most people don't understand. It's not, it just flows through you naturally once you are attuned to it. Yeah. Okay. So what about the different kinds of Reiki then? Like how, how do they differ in, in what you do, I suppose? All right, think of Reiki as an umbrella mm -hmm. and all the different types of Reiki fall underneath it. So uh, if you want to think of it as the different spokes holding up the umbrella, that, uh, that's another way of doing it. Each one has a different purpose and or a different frequency, just like numbers have a different frequency. So does each form of Reiki. And there are hundreds of forms of Reiki because everyone a lot of people have channeled them. And what's great about them is that they all fulfill a different need. Not everybody needs the same type. Most people, you don't need all of them and people do very well without them. I personally like variety. And so for me, it's very important to have all of these to go through. It's like having your black dress. 
you have that one black dress that fits everything, but you may also want a red dress, a blue dress, a purple dress, whatever. So for me, it's like that. Yeah, and I like the way you talk about that because, you know, here at Numerologist, we are all about making sure things are like super per personalized and, you know, sort of working with that, that, that one person. And it sounds yes. like these, you know, whilst you can learn about numerology, I'm, I'm just using this as an, an analogy, whilst mm -hmm. you can use numerology as a whole to help heal, your, you know, yourself mm -hmm. and understand yourself, knowing your exact, you know, numerology chart and things like that. Yes. Helps you get to the core of your um your your life and you know that those kinds of things so it sounds like reiki is a little bit similar it is similar because it's a frequency for me it's like for i know my life number i've known my life number since i was a child i'm a six you know that that's my life number and i remember being eight years old and going to the uh a fair where they you know they spin the wheel and you have to guess the number I knew it was 15 and the 15 and that was it. And that number has stuck with me my entire life. Wow. And so the other number that has stuck with me is 18. And for me, nine is what I call the Dalai Lama number. It's what I am hoping to uh, reach or attain that type of energy. So those two numbers have always been with me and I've always felt them. You could always feel them around you. Yeah, and that actually says a lot that you're a six because it's that, you know, natural humanitarian, want to help people, all those kinds yes. of things. So it's actually uh, very telling, which is good. Now, I just want to talk about your YouTube channel a bit because the what you do on there, um, I found your videos really interesting. And although, you know, you don't really speak during them, there's not really, um, you know, any music or anything like that, but they are so powerful. Can you tell me a bit about what you're doing in your youtube videos i love my youtube videos <laughs> i have to admit i and definitely that's part of my life and i enjoy so much the youtube videos is where i am able to channel the energy through space and time to a specific intention you don't need sound I, people think that you need to have music or you need to have sound. In fact, that's the number one question I get asked. There's no sound. I go, you don't need sound. You ne just need to relax to receive it. I, one question that another question I get asked a lot is like, what are you thinking? All I do when I, I know is like, I usually set the intention and let the Reiki flow. Sometimes I am very out of it where I don't realize I'm even sending and my husband keeps track of time for me or my daughter or even my son when they were doing it and they would tell, have to tell me stop because I would just continue. It would just flow. Other times I'm very aware of what's going on around me. But in any case, all I do is raise my hand. I set the intention that the Reiki flow to whoever wishes to receive it, wherever it's playing, whenever it's playing, because my videos from 2009 are just as relevant today and just as powerful as they were then. So it's a concept many people have a hard time wrapping their head around that you can go through time with energy. You can go through space. I can do it here in New Jersey and it could reach someone in China uh, five years from now, six years from now. But that's all I do. I set the intention. That's the most important thing with Reiki or with any energy work, whether you're manifesting money or love in your life, is to set the intention and know that it's going to happen. Yeah, and that's, that's what I was gonna ask you actually, because a lot of your videos are, you know, it's a Reiki for anxiety or a Reiki for some, yes. something else. So is it all about, you know, thinking about people's specific struggles and then setting an intention to help them he heal those those problems? Is that, is that what you do? Well, what I do is I set the intention and the intention is for it to help people in whatever way it can. Mm -hmm. So for some people, the energy is immediate, you know, the results, they get it in that one session, that Reiki video will do it or a distant session. And for others, it may take time depending on the blockages. I don't say that it work in a specific way. I leave it open-ended so that universe finds the best way. 
for many people, it may come across in a secondary manner. So for example, if someone is using one of my videos for a challenge, uh, let's, I don't know, for their lungs, something's going on with their lungs, they play the videos and they may feel a little better, but all of a sudden they may be referred to a doctor that can help them even more, or they may read an article about something, or they may see something on TV. It, it may work in a secondary manner and it may not work immediately, it may work a couple weeks, months. For some people it may take years, but using it along with other tools like numerology, uh, essential oils, colors, uh, crystals, all of them can work together to help a person. Absolutely. And um, I noticed in pretty much all your videos, you do have crystals there with you. How do you yes. choose the crystals? Are they, are they um, based on the intention you're setting or is it just, do you pick what you like at the time? It's really the ones that pick me. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't pick them. I ask which ones want to help. And those are the ones that come with me on videos. I, if it were up to me, I'd have the whole table full of them, but <laughs> that's not how it works. Only specific ones want to help. Some of them have a need to be a universal uh, energy supplement. And I call that supplement because they want to supplement whatever the Reiki is doing. And other ones that are just friendly, they just want to say hi. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I think that's a great way to pick crystals. And I bet you've got a whole room full of them, haven't you, to choose from? Several. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> yes. Now, with your YouTube videos, I think when I first watched them, and, and that, you're right, I, I was one of those people, I was like, oh, there's no sound. Have I, have I not put the sound on or what's going on? Is there a way that, is there a best way for people to consume those videos, to open themselves up to receiving the energy? Um, you know, because I, I feel like that there could be a lot of skeptics or a lot of people who are thinking, well, she's not telling, she's not saying anything to me, so I can't receive what she's giving me. How, how, do, how do you work with that? For me, the best way to receive the energy is either when you're resting, that means sleeping, or taking a nap, or during meditation. Okay. People can also play music during the videos. I don't play music because I'm very picky about music, and I can just see myself, you know, playing something that won't appeal to the mass majority of people. I happen to like Disney music. I don't think everybody wants to hear Step in Time. <laughs> just... <laughs> It's not going to work, even without it, copyright infringements. <laughs> it, it's just not going to work. So I let the person choose the music, but really when we're sleeping, napping, or meditating, mm -hmm. the energy has the best chance to work because then our conscious mind takes a nap. Mm -hmm. It takes a break, it goes to rest, and our subconscious absorbs the energy better. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I thought was really interesting when I was looking at your YouTube channel and your website and those things, you call it a Reiki. I'm going to, it's almost like you can give somebody a, a Reiki. Um, I don't know if I've got that terminology right, but it feels like more than, you know, if you were going for an acupuncture session or something like that, it feels like a physical thing that you can give to somebody. What, what would you say to that? I say I share Reiki. Okay. That's my best way of putting it because I'm sharing the energy that's coming through me with someone else or a group of people or a space or a situation. It, it's not mine to give. It's mine to share. Oh, okay. I, I like that. I like that. Now, do you find there's a difference in sharing Reiki via sort of a distance uh, platform like YouTube or, or Zoom or Skype or whatever and doing it in person? For, it's so funny because for some people, actually a lot of my students who have taken Reiki in person from other Reiki masters have told me that the Reiki I share is stronger than any they've experienced. Not having a person in front of you makes it easier. Whether it's on YouTube or when I'm doing a distance session, because there's no blockage, no preconceived notions of what I should be doing or shouldn't be doing. 
So when I send Reiki out there, I just send it and let it flow. I don't, you know, set the intention, let it go. And it's so much easier. It takes the pressure off of me. And it lets the person receive whatever amount they need to receive. Sometimes when I was doing Reiki in person, a lot of times the attunements were too strong. I had to learn to do different things so that I wasn't knocking people out and they were on my sofa for a while. <laughs> that was a challenge. Or even now with distance sessions, I let people know what they may feel because they may be energetically knocked out for a day or two. So they need to be home and be able to rest, to absorb the energy and if preferably at night. Wow. Okay. So one thing I'm interested to learn is how you, how do you hone that energy? How, how do you learn how to take this energy and pass it through you and, and, and share it with, with whoever you, you're sharing it with? How, how does that work? Well, that works through, first of all, for a person to become attuned to Reiki, you need to have a Reiki master attune you. Mm -hmm. So I would attune my students. To be able to do it through space and time requires a level two and above. Level two allows you to go back in time or into the future. And then level three, of course, can do the same. It's something that is taught. For example, my classes, I have videos and I have a handout. I also recommend the book because the book doesn't follow Reiki the way I do. I realize I'm more creative with Reiki than most people, but I like to give my students the traditional type of background too, not just my background, because you need to be well-rounded to be able to understand Reiki in its whole. You cannot just have one person's view. Many Reiki masters will say, it's my view, or nothing at all. And that is so wrong because there's so much out there. Or combining Reiki with numbers, crystals, colors, essential oil. Many people don't do that. They're saying that's not being pure. I go, you know, vanilla ice cream is pure, but you know, put something else like strawberries in it and it's wonderful. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you can combine it with other things and it turns out well. Absolutely. So let's talk about that combination then. Um, and, and I'd love to explore the, the concept of numbers. I'm sorry, I'm getting a, I'm getting a sun situation here. That's okay. I, I, I totally get it. Um, yeah, so let's talk about numbers and healing. Do you work with numbers in your practice? Yes. Okay. Depending on the person and the session, I may give them a healing code, a, a number specific for them that will work with their goal and their intentions. You know, numbers are frequency and a tool, just like crystals and everything else. Some people have numbers all throughout their aura where you just pick up that number and you just know it's their number. And it's a number they should carry with them in their pocket. It's a number that they should place under the pillow at night. Some are combinations of numbers because it's so funny, I'm six, so one five, is my specific frequency. It's not just the number six. For me, it's the combination of the one and the five that work best for me. Same thing with other people. They may have a six, but it may be, you know, two, 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 that is their best number. So what I will do is I will receive the information about a number and then I'll use a pendulum to check to see what combination of that number would be the best vibration for them. It doesn't happen with every Reiki session. It happens with some Reiki sessions where it's such a strong message that that number comes in so loudly that I let them know. All right. So I just want to touch on what you were you were talking about there, which is it's really important for people to understand the combination of the numbers, too, because in numerology, we always say, OK, you reduce down to one digit unless it's a master number, in which case, you, you know, you keep yes. it. But then, you know, the, the people who do have, they are a six, but they're a combination of the one and the five. Those two numbers, are, you know, the, the, those frequencies of those two numbers are so, um, you know, well, they're, they're very different numbers and, and, and sort of having, having those and understanding the, the combination and then how it reflects into the six is, you know, it's, it's a really sort of different perspective of actually looking at things and looking at your various challenges and you know where you're yes. going in life and all those kinds of things so I love that you actually do that in in your practice too well it's like when you're making a pumpkin pie 
it's a combination of spices, but not everyone's going to like the same spices in their pumpkin pie. Absolutely. So you have to really work to see which is the best one. And I think having a background in numerology made it easier for me to understand that concept. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I just want to talk about, you know, Reiki sessions in, in general. Mm -hmm. When somebody comes for a Reiki session, do they need a specific um, goal in mind? Or do they just need to, you know, they just need, no, they need something. They need um, some healing in some way, but they don't necessarily know where or what. How, how does that work? Well, when a person purchases a Reiki session from me, they can tell me if they have a specific intention or they may pick a specific type of Reiki that I offer. But generally, just being open to receiving whatever information comes through is the best. Setting an intention is good in a way, but it also lock, it locks people out from a lot of other things. If you're going for a session, for example, uh, for the heart chakra. Let's say you're saying, I have heartbreak. I want love, the love session. But I can do the love session, but there may be another message coming through even more important that there may be a, a challenge that is affecting the love session that you aren't aware of, the love. So by being open, it, it's so much easier. Now, a lot of people who take a break with me understand that, all right, they take the general regular session and then they receive guidance or or they are aware of something so they may just say after the distance session say i really need the love session because the guides may have spoken to them something may have opened up where then they acknowledge what they need and that's fine and in fact that's how i like it the best when people start general and then move into more specific so now I'm going to go into some questions from our audience because we, we did have a few community questions. Um, sure. So these are, are about Reiki, but there's some about dream interpretation as well, which I know okay. um, you, you have done before. So, so I'm going to ask you those too. But the first question is about Reiki. And it's, mm -hmm. it's how um, I would like to know how to tap into the abilities inside me. And do I need any kind of psychic ability to do Reiki? You don't need psychic ability to do Reiki. Most of the practitioners I work with just work on themselves. They do not work on other people. Uh, at least most of my students don't. With Reiki, all you have to do is have that willingness, that openness, and that calling. Because it is a calling. It's not something, everybody can do it. It's like baseball. I, I like baseball, so that's the best analogy for me. Anybody and everybody can play baseball. But not everyone is going to be a superstar. It, it, it's not because superstars not only have the innate ability, but they practice and practice and practice. So for Reiki, practicing is the best way to get stronger and to improve your abilities. And that's something most people don't realize. Most people think, okay, I do it. I get the attunement and that's it. I'm constantly reading books, trying new things. I, I don't stop learning. If I stopped learning, then I wouldn't be as good at what I do as I am now. Yeah, okay, that's, that's a great perspective. I love your perspective on things, Lourdes. It's, it's very refreshing. <laughs> um, so the next question is, I have dreams about death and nasty stuff. What's that supposed to mean? For me, death is always about transformation. Mm -hmm. That person may be going through a transformation and doesn't realize it. There may be a fear of going through that transformation and that's why death is coming up. Okay. So I definitely think there, that nasty stuff may be the fears about it, about this change, because they may be afraid of change. Yeah, and, and fear of change is a big fear in a lot of people, isn't it? I go through that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I totally understand it. <laughs> I totally get it. It's definitely a funny one, isn't it? Because I think, I think a lot of us can be, um, can be scared of, of change and, and we acknowledge that fear and we're still scared of it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I totally get it. Just this past week, I changed count, uh, scheduling systems. I can't even tell you the amount of screaming, yelling and ranting and raving it took for one whole day before I finally capitulated and said, it's done, I'm doing it. <laughs> and then I did it and now I'm happy. Yeah. But I, it took me, I'd say two months and then it finally 
had a culmination of the ranting and raving and then it was done. Well, there you go. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like how you've got a process for it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, ne the next question is, <clears throat> excuse me, can Reiki help me with my physical ailments? Because I am in the US, I make it very clear that Reiki doesn't quote unquote heal. Mm -hmm. In the US, unless you are a doctor, a medical practitioner, you know, certified by the state or the country, you cannot say Reiki heals. What I say is that Reiki helps release energy blockages that are contributing to a challenge. So if there is an emotional blockage that is contributing to your physical challenge, Reiki may assist you with energetic uh, healing or improvement. Uh, I cannot say it's going to cure anything. People are always that will Reiki cure this. And I am very specific about that. You, Reiki does not cure. Reiki releases energy blockages. And depending on your soul's journey, it may improve to the point where you don't have that challenge, or it may improve you where you just feel better. But I, I cannot say, quote unquote, cure. <laughs> Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, now, the next question is about some quick and practical tips to okay. implement Reiki into, into somebody's life. So um, this person um, works with their chakras already. Are there any quick and practical tips you can give them to implement any kind of Reiki practice into their life? Yes, if they're working with chakras, depends. If they're doing yoga, I recommend doing playing my Reiki playlist on the chakras because that will assist them with that. If they're just using crystals with their chakras, they can use my crystal videos to uh, amplify that. If they're just working with plain chakras, they can use my videos to clear them, to strengthen them. I have videos just specifically for that. Reiki for the aura, Reiki for the meridians. Most people don't realize that the meridians, the energy channels are just as important as the chakras. Mm. So, Reiki will definitely work with any of them. And I suggest if you're taking time to work on your chakras, play a Reiki video to help amplify the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Um, you know, working on yourself, because we're talking a lot about, um, you know, you working with other people and, ch and, do, and doing that energy work with other people. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do people actually... Um, you know, put, put, do, do Reiki on themselves. Is, is that a thing? You know, if they're not listening to a specific playlist or receiving a, a specific video or session or something like that, can they hone into their own energies and, and that kind of thing? People can hone into their own energies, but it's not Reiki, unless yeah, okay. you're a Reiki practitioner. If you're That's a Reiki it. practitioner, yes, you can do it. One of the things I do teach is, you know, using your hands to give yourself Reiki. Mm -hmm. And I myself, I give myself Reiki every night. Wow. I, that's something I do every single night or I work on my family members. Just even if we're watching TV, I'll have one hand on one person, one hand on the other person and I work on them. But if you're working on yourself energetically and you're not a Reiki master, it's not Reiki. It's not saying it's wrong. It's just a different frequency. It's not what we're doing. And if you're by yourself, you could use the Reiki videos to complement that. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I've got a question for you about uh, sure. doing Reiki on your family. Well, it's probably a two-part question. Do they, um, do they know you're doing it? And are they open to it? Uh, all the members of my immediate family are Reiki practitioners. Oh, wow. Uh, my husband, daughter, and son are Reiki masters. My parents are Reiki level two. My nieces and nephews are all Reiki masters. And I have my sister is a Reiki practitioner. My sister-in-law is a Reiki practitioner. Wow. So they're all open to it. In fact, my aunt and uncle are as well. They usually, when I ask, when they sit down, I just tell them, give me, let me put my hand on your body parts here, you know, your leg, your head, and the Reiki flows. And they're open to it. They're always happy. And they share it with me. For example, if I'm having uh you know, stress and a part of my body, my husband will place his hand there or my daughter will place her hand on my knees if she thinks they need it. So it works really well with all of us being able to do it. Wow, that's incredible. I don't think I've ever met anybody who's had such a, um, a, a huge family involvement in one kind of thing, which is awesome. So it, it is. My, my question is, who was first? 
I was the first. Yeah. I attuned everybody else. Wow. Because they all showed an interest in it. And it's so funny because the ones who are older, some of them are still doing them, some are not. Mm -hmm. But one of the ones who is older has gone into the medical field. So it's so funny. They've gone into the medical field and they are aware of yoga and the chakras and stuff. They're not, they know that Reiki is real. They've done different things, but they're just, they've absorbed it. Like it's part of them. Uh, the, it's so funny. The older par the older ones, my parents and my aunt and uncle, they know it and they have it, but they forget it. So yeah. I always have to constantly say, um, did you, you know, do Reiki on yourself? And they're like, oh, I forgot. And I, I, I assume it's age. I'm going to yeah. assume it's age. <laughs> That's it. They're all, oh, you know, past 80. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but uh, they will do it on themselves. So my parents will share Reiki with each other. Mm -hmm. And my aunt and uncle, they're oh, a lot older still. So what I will do is I'll just send Reiki to them. Or, or they'll call me and tell me, can you send me Reiki? Yeah, wow. So, which is fine. And the kids used it on their tests, which is great. That's when my cool. kids were in high school and in college, they would use Reiki to do well on their tests. That's and they really did. Cool. Both, both kids graduated with honors. So I can't complain. <laughs> and I actually think it's super cool that um, the person you're talking about who went into the medical field, um, I, I think that actually opens up another question about misconceptions mm -hmm. of, you know, Reiki versus traditional healthcare and those kinds of things. What kind of misconceptions do you get about Reiki? And do you get any skepticism? It's so funny because I'm very lucky where my, sp I have a gastroenterologist. He is, he's aware of Reiki. He goes and tells people about it. So he's very aware of it. My gynecologist is like, do meditation, do yoga, do everything else to help you with your challenges. But when I've been at the hospital for different things, and if somebody has asked me what I do from a medical point of view, uh, doctors, uh, they're skeptical. Nurses are more open to it. Wow. And I'm not saying not every doctor, because of course, like I said, my gastroenterologist and my gynecologist are open to it. But in the hospital setting, it's so very funny how some of them just look at me like, you really believe in that? And it's like, um, you believe in air and can you see it? And you can, so <laughs> why not? Yeah. And, and that's a good point, isn't it? it it's, um, it's a non-tangible thing. It's, it's a energy yes. flow that people can't see. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of times people have a hard time actually believing you know in air quotes something that they can't actually see it's so funny i used to work at a place with a lot of people and some of the gentlemen that were engineers i remember one gentleman he had elbow pain and he goes i have elbow pain i go let me put my hands on you just for a few minutes to see if it helps mm -hmm. and wouldn't you know after that session it was only like 10 15 minutes and that was how many years ago? It had to be at least eight, nine years ago. I, I've run into the gentleman. He goes, I, I still don't have pain after that. And these are guys who do not believe in, uh, you know, airy fairy stuff, if you want to call it that. Some people call it that. And they're like, we don't know what you did, but it works. <laughs> and I was like, that's all you need to know, that it works. And as long as you're open to it. And I've had that happen from a lot. I had a mechanic who had wrist pain, I would put my hands on him for a few minutes. He never had got it back. Wow. So, and these are not, you know, people who are studying meditation and yoga and yeah. energy work. They're regular guys who didn't believe and now they're more open. See, that's interesting then, isn't it? Because um, if, you know, they didn't necessarily believe before you did it. So it, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, okay, well, you don't necessarily have to be open to it for it to work for you, which is refreshing for any kind of energy work, because usually you have to kind of be open to receiving what, what you're being given. Yes. And I think if you're open, you receive more. Mm -hmm. But I think when you get to a certain level of pain or a certain level of discomfort, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, there's a cry for help to the universe. Yeah. And that does open you up to energy. And that's what I find that there's a beacon being sent out, you know, the bat signal. For Batman. <laughs> it gets sent out for, Re for Reiki or any other form of energy to come through to help that person. 
I always feel that you're at the right place at the right time for a reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for all these people, I knew I was at the right place and at the right time. Excellent. All right, let me uh, ask a couple more questions and then, uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll end the session. Um, so this uh, person asks, um, my sister has just become a Reiki master. What's the best gift I can buy her? Oh, that's a nice question. That is lovely. Yeah. Well, it depends on her. For me, I happen to love candles, crystals, essential oils, uh, I, even oracle cards, oracle cards, some of them are specifically meant for healing. And that's another thing. There are numerology, there are cards, numerology decks that have the frequency of a number. And that helps a person because even if you're not a Reiki master, you can take that card. It has that vibration and can use that energy work. So for them, I also like tuning forks. That's something most people don't realize they have a numerical frequency. Use tuning forks and that may be something she may get into. When I work on people physically, like my family, I love using tuning forks. Oh my gosh, because not only do they get it, but I get it too. Or if you want the singing bowls. So it would, depends on her or if she has doesn't have a massage table that's always great <laughs> <laughs> yeah it depends how much you want to spend as well doesn't it <laughs> exactly but you can even get used ones at least here in the u.s yeah. very economically so there's so many different things that she may want if she's doing reiki in a room specifically a crystal to help purify the space incense for energy work sage palo santo there is so much that's open i i i can, if I could, I would get one of everything and that's it. <laughs> that's good advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think she would very much like one of everything. <laughs> I don't, I, I definitely would. <laughs> All right. One more question and then we'll go. Um, so uh -huh. this is about dreams again. So I've been having intense dreams for a while. I'd love to know about how the scenarios in our dreams and how we interact with people in our dream has a correlation to real life. It's so funny because I am going to be doing, for my Reiki students, I usually do a private live stream. And one of the things is Reiki uh, in dreams and symbolizing, symbolism uh, for houses, for cars, and how it relates to us. Dreams are really the way our subconscious mind goes and interprets or analyzes or absorbs the energy of what's happened during the day. But it's not only that, they help also uh, channel the energy from our guides in the universe. So some dreams are purely, you know, if you had a rough day and you find yourself climbing a, a rocky mountain, well, that could have been your day, that, that's simple. But if you have a dream where you're talking to a loved one who's passed and it's so real that it's still with you the next day, there's a very good chance that loved one did come through the dream because that was the easiest way for that person to communicate with you. So it really depends on the type of dream you're having. And is it a reoccurring dream and what's happening in your life? So if you're constantly running in dreams, are you stressed at work? Do you feel like you're on a wheel, like a, a, a rat or a mouse that you're constantly going on that, you know, through the rat race, quote unquote. That's an interpretation of it. Or if in your dreams, you're carrying this heavy weight. Well, do you have stress from a specific situation in your life? Are you caring for your parents and your kids more? Where is that weight on your shoulders? So it always gives a message. And the messages are so varied depending on the person and their situation. Absolutely. All right, Lourdes, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a super insightful journey into Reiki. Um, and I hope a lot of our listeners got a lot from that too. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some links to your website and your sessions and things like that in the mm -hmm. show notes. And I'm going to put a link to your YouTube channel because people should definitely check that out. There is definitely a video for them on there. Uh, like you said, there's over a thousand videos on there. So that is mm -hmm. super cool. All right, Lourdes, thank you once again. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Hey numerologist community, I hope you really enjoyed this podcast on Numerologist's YouTube channel. You can head to the link in the description if you want to listen to this on iTunes or Google Podcasts and you can subscribe there too. If you love this video and want to see more, make sure you subscribe to our channel as well.